In this series of videos, I'll be explaining what time signatures are and how they work. In this video, part three, I'll be looking at the less common time signatures listed here. It's really important that you understand what time signatures are and how to calculate them as duple, triple, quadruple, simple, or compound. If you're unsure, have a look at parts one and two before watching this video. Some of these time signatures are less common than others. Some are quite rare and you could argue not really necessary. Let's look at two eight first. By now you should be familiar that an eight at the bottom of the time signature means the beats are quavers. So two eight means two quaver beats per bar. Each quaver can be split into two equal parts, two semiquavers. So we know that this is a simple time signature. With two beats in the bar, it is therefore a duple simple time signature. And for this and all time signatures in this video, I'll add their full name at the top of the screen where the red arrow is pointing at the moment. Now you might say, why have two eight when you could have one four? One four having one crotchet in each bar, one crotchet being the same as two quavers. Well, one four doesn't really exist anymore. It has been used before, and I'm sure that there is somebody who's going to write a piece of music where it be used again. But trust me, there really isn't much point to one four. If it helps, remember that we need to refer to a time signature as duple, triple, or quadruple. If our time signature was one four, there would only be one beat in each bar. The words duple, triple, or quadruple can't apply. So one four, it's not really a useful time signature. 616, 916 and 1216 are time signatures which pop up every now and again, so it's worth knowing what they mean. This is the first time I've mentioned time signatures with a 16 at the bottom, so let's just take a moment to calculate which beat is being used. You remember from part one that we need to work out which of these notes fits into a semi-brief 16 times, 16 being the number at the bottom of the time signatures. All of these are accounted for. The minim fits into a semi-brief twice, hence the use of a two. The crotchet fits four times, hence the four. And the quaver fits eight times. So let's have a look at a semi-quaver. One semi-quaver equals a quarter. Therefore, a group of four semi-quavers equals one, because a quarter and a quarter, and a quarter and another quarter equals one. So four groups of four semi-quavers equals a semi-brief, because 16 semiquavers fit into a semibrief, we now know that the 16 at the bottom of the time signature represents semiquaver beats. For time signatures with a 16 at the bottom, the pulse is a dotted quaver. Each dotted quaver can be split into three equal parts, semiquavers. So as they can be split into groups of three, we know that the three time signatures we are looking at are compound time signatures. 616 has two pulses. So it is a compound duple time signature. 916 has three pulses, making it compound triple. And 1216 has four pulses, making it compound quadruple. The time signature of 48 is a bit of an odd one. If I showed you this passage of music, it could be 48, as there are four quaver beats per bar. However, it could also be 2-4 with two crotchet beats per bar. If you were sitting a music theory exam and you had to name the time signature, both answers would be correct. The only difference being the pulse. 2-4 is two crotchet beats per bar, whereas 4-8 is four quaver beats per bar. Each beat in 4-8 can be split into two semi-quavers, making it a simple time signature. As there are four beats in a bar, it is quadruple. So 4-8 is a simple quadruple time signature. Finally, let's look at the time signatures of 6494 and 124. 6494 and 124 are all based on crotchet beats, hence the 4 at the bottom of the time signature, but the pulse is a dotted minim. Here's a bar of crotchets in 94 with the crotchet beat numbers written underneath. The emphasis or the pulse falls on beats 1, 4, and 7 or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This means that the first pulse lasts for the duration of beats 1, 2, and 3. Three beats equaling a dotted minim. Beats 4, 5, 6 is the second pulse, and beats 7, 8, 9, the third pulse. Now you might ask, why does the pulse fall on beats 1, 4, and 7? Well, if it fell on every other beat, so 1, 3, 5, 7, we'd have an odd beat at the end, beat 9. 
there must always be an equal number of pulses per bar. That is until we get to irregular time signatures, more of those in part four. Even counting in fours, we'd have an odd beat at the end. So the pulse falls every three beats, making the bar made up of dotted minim pulses. There are three pulses in this bar of 9-4, meaning that 9-4 is in triple time. In 6-4, there are two pulses, making it duple time. 12-4 completes the trio, being the time signature with four pulses, hence being quadruple time. One final calculation, are these time signatures simple or compound? Well, each dotted minim can be split into three equal crotchets, a group of three, meaning that it is compound. Therefore, 6-4 is compound duple, 9-4 is compound triple, and 12-4 is compound quadruple. I've been through quite a few complex, confusing and tricky time signatures in this video. I always recommend that theory should be studied in tandem with any instrumental studies. Next time you play a piece of music, have a good look at the time signature, feel the pulse and notice how the notes are beamed together. I will be looking at beaming in another of my videos, but by studying carefully the music you are playing will help you recognise and interpret the composer's choice of time signature. Thanks for watching this video. In part four, I'll be looking at irregular time signatures where the bar does not divide up equally.